It is part of the history of the city of Lynchburg that many people do not even realize. Lynchburg became a thriving city largely on the backs of enslaved people. ABC 13's Noreen Turin joins us with her look at the city's history of urban slavery. Well, Dan or Mark, when we think of slavery, most of us probably picture the plantations that we see in the movies. But slavery was also happening right here in Lynchburg, just in a different way. This map here highlights just six of the dozens of sites we drive past every day rediscovered by the Silent Witnesses Project to shine a light on an important, though painful, part of Lynchburg's past. Today, Lynchburg is a thriving city with a downtown bustling with activity, but many don't realize how we got here. Enslaved people built so much of the city that we still use today, benefit from today. It's really all around us, and yet uh, it's, it's unknown to most people, forgotten to most people. Slavery in the city looked a lot different than the plantations, but was no less grueling. They worked in the industries here, the foundries. They built railroads. They excavated the railroad tunnel. They worked as specialty craftsmen, coopers and blacksmiths and all the trades that needed to happen then. They were really an absolutely essential part of the local economy. Right across 12th Street here, this structure is the old Knight's Tobacco Factory. In fact, enslaved laborers put Lynchburg on the map with their long hours doing difficult work in tobacco factories, including this one. And all that was done all over Lynchburg, and Lynchburg had very famous brands made here. Uh, but um, like, done, do done almost entirely by enslaved people. Wow. A lot of uh, white folks became very rich uh, on the backs of the enslaved uh, labor that they had. Ramona Battle is a descendant of enslaved people herself and a founding member of the Silent Witnesses Project. It's a collaboration between the Legacy Museum and the Lynchburg Museum System to research and mark sites connected to slavery. It's based on a project in Germany marking Holocaust-related sites. We decided that we were going to look here in the city um, and see if what we could uncover. We were particularly interested in auction sites. The market house was literally in right the middle there. right there. What researchers uncovered has been eye-opening. Right, so behind me, literally right in the center of 9th Street here, was the market house. And this is probably the single most famous site associated with slavery in Lynchburg because it was right here at the heart of downtown at this busy intersection of 9th and Main. And the market house was a community market where people sold produce and, you know, ch uh, eggs and chickens and that sort of thing. But on certain days at certain times, right in front of the market house, so literally right in this intersection right here, people were sold. For 50 years, human beings put up on blocks right here and auctioned off to the highest bidder. Individuals being, you know, scrutinized for their body, families being separated, all that, right, literally right here. And it's hard not to drive through this intersection and see it the same way. In fact, Lynchburg Museum director Ted Delaney says the slave trade here was big business. Lynchburg was a major center of slavery in the state of Virginia. It was the largest slave market west of Richmond. This was the site of Woodruff's slave auction and boarding business. Woodruff's auction house was here at the corner of Commerce and 10th Streets where this parking deck now stands. The building was owned by notorious slave trader Seth Woodruff. Woodruff was, as, as I mentioned, the most famous or infamous slave trader, or slave dealer in Lynchburg. And as a matter of fact, he was so well known that Harriet Beecher Stowe mentioned him. And she mentioned Seth Woodruff from Lynchburg, Virginia, as an example of how, you know, slave trading was real. He treated people like livestock, like animals. People came from all over to buy and sell through him. His ads were in the local papers daily. Selling 20 Negroes consisting of women, men, women, boys, and girls. Uh, also at the same time, beef, cattle, milk, cows, oxen. So that goes to show you how they were considered. They're really being treated like chattel, livestock, property. Mm. Public sale, look how that's grouped. Negroes, stock, crops. As for the enslaved laborers working in the city, they were kept in housing like this, Left Witch's Row on Harrison Street. It was named after its owner, a tobacco tycoon. Today, this is what fills that space, low-income apartments. The tenants, perhaps unaware of those who once lay their heads here, 
the silent witnesses to the darker side of Lynchburg's past. And I only got to show you four of the six sites the Silent Witnesses Project has focused on so far. You can read about the rest in my extended version of this report right now at WSET.com. The organization is hoping to be able to install the bronze plaques for these six sites sometime in April. They're going to dive into another group of sites as more funding comes in. Back to you. Thanks for watching the ABC 13 YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos and live coverage and local stories, click to subscribe and download our ABC 13 News app.